everyone. Um, it's nice to see a few of you gathered. It's a little cold outside, so I felt like the odds of being alone were getting small. Um, my name is Tamara Tolzo Laughlin. That's the most complicated thing that you will learn about me in the next few minutes together. If you could say it well, I'll meet you outside for a drink. Um, I am a part of a collective of folks who call ourselves Climate Critical Earth. I'm the rabble rouser who started us, so I get to be the founder. Um, there are other things that I do. So I'm actually way louder than you might imagine, even without these. Um, I, I, I have been working at the intersection of environment, nay, climate, energy, and how people handle all of that for about 26 years. I can carbon date my decision to move into this space by my relationship to when the McRib was born, which is like a whole other thing, right? Because it came, it went, it died, it retired. It's like Tom Brady, it's back again. Who knows what's happening with it? Um, but here we are. So if you want to hear me talk about any of those things, you could likely find me in these places. So here are some other places where I'm probably also making your life harder or easier, depending on your angle towards it. I spend a lot of time uh, hanging out with people like Denise Fairchild, <laughs> if I get the opportunity, uh, trying to make sure that all the green words don't get in the way of the other words and vice versa. So our missions are aligned and the mission of my life is entwined with a lot of these organizations because what else are we doing here? The other place you'll find me is I'm the CEO and president of the Environmental Grantmakers Association. That's a title that I've worn for just about two years and I don't carry it lightly. The idea is that there's no chance we can make the change we need to make if we're not doing it in a multi-hyphenate stance because that's just how the work actually happens. So in the 26 years since the McRib first made its debut, I have really been thinking a lot about the internal stuff, not just the stuff that's happening on the external parts of climate that make everybody feel nervous and uncomfortable, but the things that are dragging us down that we created. So I name them. It's not just the climate crisis. It's not just how we pay for it, especially since as enviros, we pretended we don't have to pay for things for like 10, 15, 20, 40, 50 years. Um, climate grief and the idea that we are all currently going through so much transition that grief isn't quite big enough to cover it. And then celebrity, which is the idea that we anoint specific people to represent entire continents of folks having feelings about things changing. So what I want to talk about today is that the things that we are doing now are difficult. But what makes them harder is that our tendency towards doing what makes us feel comfortable is coming at a time where we just don't have time to rehash these old fights, to have them with the same folks, or to disagree with people we largely agree with in principle. So the four places where I'm really seeing this is that we're all experiencing waves of, of authoritarianism. Like the idea that eco-fascism is a thing is because we didn't deal with fascism, right? So here we are. Norms of regression in how we deal with conflict, how we show up for it, and what happens when we show up in global governance spaces to try to handle it. Let's say COP 25, 26, 27, and what's coming with COP 28. The idea that while all of that stuff is happening on the big stage, we are having personal, interpersonal, institutional, and systemic crashes that are actually undermining our ability to win. We might be our worst ally. Based on 26 years of staring at this work, all day, every day, no matter what we call it or what we're eating. And flat, to make it worse, the planet doesn't give a crap about what we're doing. It is not phased by our inability to work together and the processes that we're unleashing are going to continue. So if you came into this room looking for the cheery talk, this is not it. So just wanna make sure you're in the right room. I wanna lift up that Climate Critical is really focused on the idea that people are our most precious resource. That of all the things we want to do something about, what we could actually do something about today is the quality of our relationships, what that does to build our coalitions, and how people use their relational capital to do things that are frankly superhuman. So Climate Critical Earth is a group of folks, largely black women, who have been invisible and essential in holding up different parts of this movement forever, frankly. I would say America's a widget machine that makes this sort of thing where we ask people to be deeply valuable to how we work, but also quiet. So, so flagging that a group of us got together to say, we don't have time to redo this again. We need to get it done right the first time. We decided we would step up. This is what we do in a pretty interesting way of viewing it. So we think about what it means to help people remember to stop being so busy they forgot to be people. 
We spent a lot of time in care and repair practice, literally asking people whose brains are full of campaigns and marketing and numbers and metrics to just take a break for God's sake. Or, you know, whoever's sake, fill in the blank. Here are a few of the folks that do it with us, along with many others who have signed up to say, burnout is real and I'm experiencing it. And in what our time, what we've been doing together is thinking about how do we get the word out that burnout is not a personal problem, it's a systemic failure. So we spent a lot of time talking to all the folks we know across the work and did a survey, an international and national survey on burnout, just this question. We asked people, are you feeling it? Is it real? How can we help you? And whose help would you accept? Among a couple of other questions and got some interesting things. The information's still coming in, so I'm gonna give you five high level like takeaways that you can think about as you go back to your places of employment to hopefully make them places that aren't in the crosshairs of this conversation. So the first thing we thought about is that we should probably admit that burnout is everywhere and it's pervasive. Everybody, nearly every single person we talk to in 104 different constellations inside climate and environment as a movement all came in very, very, very burnt out, very, very burnt out, or very burnt out. I, just, I mean, at this point, you might call a report toast when it comes out, just to make it easier for people. I'm like, yes, you read it, everyone's burnt out. So what makes that really interesting is that all four groups of people who are currently in the workplace fall into this category. That's even scarier because the folks that we rely on to do this work are such a massive group. We are in the middle of the everyone. Like, I will talk a little bit more about who that is, but these folks are also depleted, disillusioned, distancing themselves from the work, and these are the people we rely on, not just today, but to design tomorrow. This is really important because we're about to lose a lot of people in the workplace, a lot of really great people with experience who actually have other things they could do. So flagging that this is happening, the great retirement is upon us. 75 million boomers are gonna retire by 2030. That's happening at the same time as quiet quitting, quiet firing, the looming recession, people who are still stuck in what happened to them in the last recession. We don't really have the kind of human capital it would take to win if we don't get better at this really quickly. The third thing, not everybody's experiencing it the same way. If you notice, I'm wearing this mask because I'm a part of a community of people who are multiple kinds of vulnerable. So I cannot afford to take my fancy behind back to them with an illness if I don't have to. So flagging that not everyone is experiencing the crisis we're all in in the same way, it means black, indigenous, people of color, folks with marginalized communities, people whose bodies are failing them because of COVID, let's just be honest, are also experiencing systemic blind spots, which means the work they do isn't being seen at a time when we need everybody's innovation. So as we're getting close to the end, I want to flag that sad, fun, interesting fact that made me feel a lot of weird things when I saw it. Even though everyone's burnt out, no one wants to leave this work. 63% of the people we surveyed said that they love people and planet so much that they're going to do it anyway, which is actually hugely problematic for those of us who actually want to win because the burnout cycle means people are not at their best, they're not in right relationship, they can't possibly understand that hypervigilance and what that does to other people. So as much as it's really supportive that people see the problem, we need people to really take better care of themselves in order to help the us. Like this photo proves it's not them who's experiencing burnout, it's us. That's a big group of people. The people who build our campaigns, who develop our messaging, who build the policy that says the tone for the market you do your business in, all those people are beyond tired. And as we get super close, I want to flag that there are not enough of us focused on this. We don't have a lot of language for it. We don't know how to keep people from feeling personally implicated by admitting they need the time it takes for them to be creative. Hell, we won't even let people be bored, which is kind of like the mother of invention, right? Like really, let's be honest about it. So flagging that people don't have supportive structures in their workplace to deal with this means it's in fact everybody's problem. Here are four things we're doing to try to help people practice rest, remember themselves, stay in community, and not burn up all their bridges. We, folk, we call it four things, rehabilitation, acceleration, incubation, and facilitation. We try to make it so that the people who show up in this space have something to give and feel like they're a part of a choir so that they can tap out when it's time and come back when they're ready. Problems that we're facing, 
the lack of language, the amount of shame people have about it is resourcing this kind of support. Because when you ask someone, will you pay to make sure your, both your best employee doesn't die of a heart attack at their desk? They're like, well, sure, if you put it like that, but otherwise, no, not really. So the last thing I'll leave you with is that this moment of disposability has led us to this moment in the climate crisis. And the only thing we're going to do about it is stop throwing people away. So happy to talk about that here, there, or anywhere that you can find me. Thank you so much for your time.